Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about lightsabers. So, if you've seen the last video I made, the Star Wars The Force Awakens like fan film teaser trailer, uh, you will have seen this effect. And, uh, as you can see, if I go to the correct point, which is proving quite difficult, there is a lightsaber effect here. And um, I had a lot of questions as soon as I went into school, like how I did it. So, I thought I'd do a tutorial just really quickly on showing you how to do it. If we load up After Effects, I can get going. So we'll just import our footage from the folder that I used to make this short film. Uh, I'm planning on making a full length film at some point, but for now this is just a trailer. So we go to footage and then I believe it's this one. So I think actually for the example's sake it'll be better to use this one because uh, the lightsaber is more in shot for this. So the first thing we're going to do is drag it down over the new composition button which will load it into a new composition. So what I use for the lightsaber prop is very crude. Um, I actually, I don't know whether you can see it here if I go through it a little bit. You can just see the bottom of it a bit. It's basically, uh, I had an old chin up bar in the garage that I didn't really use anymore. So I got my Dremel which is just like a metal cutting tool and uh, I cut it off so I had like a metal bar and I just wrapped it in some like electrical tape so it had a bit of a black handle so it looks kind of Star Wars even not really but it's good enough for this um, I did a few takes of it so I'll just go to the last one which is here so now if we press B and then we'll just go through to about here and do it so hopefully this won't take ages but um, the process of doing lightsabers takes quite a while because the way you have to do it is you have to draw like a mask around uh, the thing that you want to turn into a lightsaber and then go through pretty much frame by frame and um, basically paint it out and then you can add the effect to it later. So the first thing we want to do is add a white solid. I'm doing that by pressing Command Y on the Mac. Uh, if you're on a Windows PC it's Control Y. And then we need to do it again and add a black solid. Uh, the reason why will be clear in a bit. So we're going to put the black solid underneath the footage, which we're going to call footage now. And then you just move the white solid above the black solid and underneath the footage. And you set the um, footage blending mode to screen. So now you can see the white, but we don't actually want to be able to see that yet. So we're going to turn the white solid off. And then once you've done that, all you want to do is make sure you've got the white solid selected and click the Bezier tool, which is just the little like quill pen thing up there and then we can start doing the masking. So for the first one I'm just going to draw a quick mask around the outside of the lightsaber blade and you have to do this for every single frame and there's probably what like uh, I can't really, there's no way of telling on here but uh, it's probably for every second there's 24 frames so you can imagine for like a 15 second long piece of a lightsaber in it that's going to be quite a lot of masking. So I'm probably going to speed this up because it takes a little bit of time but you'll be able to see uh, the process behind it and then I'll talk about the effects once I've finished doing the masking. There's one other thing before we start, uh, if you click the white solid and then um, to make sure that the mask moves when you change its position, you click this little arrow, go to masks, mask one, and then you just want to click this little stopwatch here which puts it in keyframe mode and that means that it's going to record every time you move it and it's going to make sure that it does what you've told it to basically. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do. Um, I could have masked the rest of it as well, but for example's sake, I'm just going to do that much. So I'm going to trim it down a little bit and go trim comp to work area. And now, as you can see, this mask, if I turn it back on, um, which we'll close this as well, uh, the white solid follows the um, broomstick wherever it goes because I've masked around it. Uh, I cut corners a little bit. What you can do is, uh, instead of doing it frame by frame, if you go two or three frames each time and um, just do that. The computer will kind of guess where it wants the mask to be when it's when you haven't keyframed it. So occasionally you might need to go back and do a few adjustments, but it looks like for this one uh, the mask is pretty much where I want it to be. So this is essentially going to be the lightsaber core, uh, the little white bit in the middle, and then we're going to add the glow now. So if we go through to the end, because it's a little bit easier to see here because it's behind a dark background, um, <clears throat> the first thing we want to do is add something called an adjustment layer. So I'm going to right click, go new, uh, adjustment layer. And what this is, it basically uh, affects everything below it. So if we move it below the footage, um, basically any layer below the adjustment layer will be affected by any any sort of effect or preset you put onto it. So the first thing we're going to do is add a fast blur, which is going to create the sort of glow of the lightsaber. So we're going to add this on here, and we're going to set it to, let's go, 2. Maybe. Um, yeah, that's probably about right. Maybe 5, actually. So you can see the lightsaber has become a little bit blurred now and um, this is kind of the impression we want but to get the proper look you have to do this 
five or six times normally. So I'm going to press Command D to duplicate the layer, and then pretty much I want to double it each time. So now I'm going to go ten. Um, but as you can see, you can't see the glow uh, of this one beneath the new adjustment layer. So the way to get around that is to change the blending mode to screen, and that lets you. Um, it still affects everything below it, but you can also see uh, the stuff below it as well. So for example. This white core can be seen, uh, you can't really see it now, but when we get further into it, you'll see this one can be seen through it, but yet this one's still affecting everything, and the glow just kind of builds up as you go. So we're going to duplicate this one, set it to 20, and then we're going to duplicate it again, set it to 40, and then we'll do it one more time and set it to, let's just go 60. We don't want to go too crazy with this. But as you can probably tell, um, it's really, really blurry. Actually, one thing I forgot to do quickly is, oops, I've just opened the wrong layer. Um, you can see as it gets to the top it just kind of fades off and that's because I forgot to click repeat edge pixels here so if we go through quickly to each adjustment layer and just tick this basically that means is when the pixels get close to the edge they don't fade out so it acts as if the mask is going beyond the um, edge of the frame basically which is what it obviously would look like normally so um, now we have all of these it looks pretty good but the glow looks a bit crazy it's a bit over the top so what you want to do is press T and change the opacity for each layer going down. So for this one, we'll set it to like, I don't know, 80 maybe. Probably go a bit lower. So maybe 50 and then this one will be 60 and then this one will be 70. This one will be 80. That looks about right. So we'll just leave it like that. And um, a lot of this is down to just personal preference really. So those are the glow um, adjustment layers now and the glow is looking pretty nice. But obviously white sabers uh, typically aren't white, so we're going to have to add some color. So the um, preset that I, I like to use for this is called Color Balance. So I'm just going to type this in the effects and presets. It's this one here, not the HLS. I don't really know what the difference is, but I just use this one. Uh, actually, we need to create a new adjustment layer first. So new adjustment layer. Uh, put it below the footage. I'm going to call this one color because it's separate to the rest of them. Then I'm going to drag the color balance on top of it. And what this is, is where you can choose the color of the lightsaber. So essentially we've got red, green, and blue. And then you've got the uh, shadows, the midtones, and the highlights for each one. So uh, I either normally go for a green or a blue. This time I'm probably going to go for a green. So um, you can turn up the green on all of them. And as you can see, it gets a bit crazy. Uh, so you kind of want to mess around with it because obviously that looks ridiculous. So I'm going to set them all to 50 and see what it looks like. Normally you don't want to turn the shadows out actually that much because uh, obviously a lightsaber doesn't have any shadows in it so it looks a bit weird. Um, you just kind of have to play with this until it looks pretty good. Uh, normally the highlights want to be the highest one because obviously it's light so the highlights going to be the most influential part of this. Uh, I reckon that looks pretty good actually. So if we zoom out now we can see we've got a green lightsaber and uh, I think that looks pretty damn cool. Apart from this, there is one other thing you can do. Obviously, um, like the muzzle flash tutorial we saw, uh, I pretty much said that anything that's light is going to cast light on the objects around it. And uh, in this case, because it's so light, especially when it's passing like here, you would actually see the light on me. And in this case, there's a shadow. So we're not going to remove the shadow, but in this case, I'm going to create a bit of a glow from the lightsaber. It's pretty easy to do this. I'm just going to duplicate the footage and put it on top. Uh, I'm going to call this glow. And like the lightsaber, we're just going to take a mask and draw a quick sort of mask around where the light pretty much will be affecting my body. Basically, when you duplicate the footage, it makes it twice as bright because it's like overlaying itself twice on top of itself. So uh, once we've masked around it, the bright bit is only the bit that we've specified. So now if we feather this, it will uh, make the light a lot softer and look more like a glow than just like a crazy harsh outline. So that's looking pretty good. So now what we have to do, if I go on glow, uh, I press M on the keyboard and click keyframe mask path um, then go down to mask expansion just click this so I can still move all the stuff uh, basically what I want to do is go through and as the lightsaber moves kind of move all the keyframes uh, slightly so that the light pretty much follows where the lightsaber goes you might have to do a few adjustments here and there actually so for example uh, I'm gonna move these ones a bit close to the edge of my face make sure that the light doesn't spill onto uh, the wall behind me and I'll probably drag these out a little bit as well and also I don't want it to go onto my hand because uh, this is actually in front of the lightsaber. And you don't have to go through frame by frame for this either. It's, it's not particularly specific so you can get away with being a bit rough with this and um, not being particularly thorough because it, it's quite a uh, basic effect. 
So as you can see, the light now more or less follows uh, where I'm going. So as the lightsaber moves, the light kind of follows it. And for a really basic effect, it actually looks pretty good. It looks very realistic. And then the finishing touch, if you want to do it, is just add a tint to it because obviously the lightsaber glow is green, not white. So uh, I'm just going to take the eyedropper tool, click on the green here. So as you can see, there's now this like green hue, which I think looks pretty cool. So now that's done, we can just export it. So I'll just go over the export settings quickly. Uh, you just go to composition, add to render queue, and then here you choose the format. So I set this to QuickTime. Go to format options, change it from animation to Apple ProRes 422, audio to uncompressed. And what that does, <clears throat> uh, ProRes is just like a really high quality format or codec, but it's um, smaller file sizes and the same for AAC. This is audio and this is video as you can see from the tabs. And then click OK because that's all you have to change there really. And then uh, under output, I'm just going to save it to, to my desktop because um, I'm not going to use this afterwards. So lightsaber, oops, I can't type. Tutorial. Save that and then just hit render. So I just have the little noise that means it's done. Um, <clears throat> I exited there and you should always save, but because this is a tutorial, I don't actually need the footage. Now, as you can see, I have a finished video of a pretty cool lightsaber effect. So that was just a basic tutorial on how you do it. Uh, it's not actually very advanced, but it's quite time consuming when you have lots to do because the masking takes a really long time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully it helped you out. It's just a little look into the kind of stuff that goes into making my videos and the special effects. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all soon.